What's going on, guys? TK Prime with Master Wealth Builders LLC. And uh, I was watching social media and I saw an interesting conversation come up. Um, some guys were talking about the black community and they were saying how other races have two incomes. They have 100% of their income and then they have 98% of black income because black people don't spend in their own community. We get our dollar and our dollar doesn't circulate in our own ecosystem it immediately goes to every other race so that means uh by assumption that every other race is basically leaning on black people to pimp us and ensure that they continue to get their money which means they don't have a vested interest in our progress and our advancement and they don't want to mess up their pockets, right? As long as we spin with everyone but ourselves, we are contributing to everyone's success but our own. So if 98% of our money goes out, that leaves 2% for us to survive on. And I thought that was an interesting point because it points to the psychosis within the uh, black community in terms of uh, collectively having a subconscious and built-in self-hate loathing um traumatized mentality right uh, we'll spend fifty thousand dollars on concert tickets but won't spend the same amount of money on something that advances us you know like an a, an asset that accumulates in value over time so when when we talk about solutions and we talk about um providing well, first of all, very few people talk about economic solution. Uh, it doesn't matter what platform you're on. Uh, it doesn't matter what leader you're talking about. It's like, uh, that's a no-no, right? You don't talk about collective black money and you don't talk about black empowerment. So uh, when, when, when you bring up solutions, people don't listen to it. If I walk up to you, I do a lot of public speaking. I do a lot of, I, don't, I do more than just social media. I, I do pop-up events where I'm talking to the public about uh, myself as a wealth strategist and how I can help redirect funds from uh, liabilities over to assets. And I, I give different solutions in terms of focusing on assets and how you can help your future if you just spend some of your money or redirect some of your money into the asset lane right but most of the time when i talk to people they their eyes glaze over and they don't commit to a consultation and they don't follow through with the paperwork uh you talk about simple things like family trust can it hurt you to have a family trust do you do people follow through do people take interest when i mention that no they don't uh, and I'm talking about not social media. I'm talking about when I do public speaking events where I'm interfacing with the public and I'm saying, hey, uh, historically, rich white families have always had a family trust. So if you set one up, it gives you some amenity. It gives you some protection. It gives you some tax advantages. And they don't gravitate towards, oh, that, that can help me. That sounds like a good idea. So even when you bring up solutions... Um, our community do not embrace the solution and follow through with the paperwork associated with setting it up. So is there a way to fix us? Uh, probably not. I think from an individual um, free will standpoint, you have the ability to make your own decision. I don't think collectively we can do anything for the race. I think individually a person can say, I'm going to spend some of my uh, earned income on asset and I'm going to, you know, put some things in place that make financial sense. So when I make these type of suggestions, if I say that a uh, cash value life insurance can help you, right? Why is it that no one wants to get one? You listen to this video when you watch it on social media, you're probably going to go back to watch the TV and forget everything I just told you. Why is that? Is it proven from other races that this works? Yes. Have other Jewish, white people proven that IULs work? Yes. Why is it you're not interested in getting one? I don't know. 
Um, some people, I've heard the, the phrase uh, saying that an IUO is the rich person's 401k. And it's an analogy that points to the historical guarded nature of IULs being in a different community, a different class of people, and a strategy only used by a certain income class, right? So if you bring that uh, investment strategy or that protection strategy down to the lower class, they reject it and say um, no, and it doesn't make sense. So does life insurance help you? Can you argue that it doesn't help you? Uh, I, I had a person tell me that they paid for car insurance for 20 years and never used it because they never had an accident. They never had an issue with their car. And he was talking to me just questioning the, the validity. Well, first of all, it's illegal not to have it. If the cops pull you over and you don't have car insurance, there's a problem. But the truth is, if someone does hit your car, it's a higher financial burden if you don't have insurance, right? So the same concept applies to life insurance. You don't have to go fund me. Uh, FYI, black people, that's not the solution to insurance. Go fund me is not insurance. You don't have to leave your family with debt. You don't have to leave your family with uh, questionable, um, you know, financial security. You can actually take care of that by signing some papers and paying a monthly bill. So why is it that people are not interested? Why is it that people argue that it's not a good idea? What part of uh, religion or what part of hatred or what part of anything that prevents you from having life insurance? Same thing with any other type of insurance because there's so many different sectors within this lane. We, you know, final expense, mortgage protection, cancer insurance, um, cell phone, I mean, you name it, there's a whole sector of products that are associated with having protection just in case something happens. And there's nothing uh, consciously or sanely that you can argue that says that doesn't make sense. I'd rather pay for it myself. Why would I want to have a company help me pay for something when something else happens? That makes zero sense whatsoever. But we argue and we do not fill out the paperwork. We don't follow through with the consultation. And I don't understand why. Uh, I'm on a personal mission to try to affect some people because I realize that 90% of the people out here I can't reach. But I'm trying because I feel like... I, I told you guys a million times that my mom did it for me. And it changed my life. My mother passed away and she left me an annuity within a trust. And that financially empowered me because guess what? I don't have a job right now, but it changed my life. So I'm a living testimony of the fact that it works, the fact that it's easy to set up. That's why I got licensed to do this, because I, I, I know I'm a walking testament for how it changes lives, how it empowers future generations and how it could basically solve your your money problems. <laughs> because none of us know when the day and the time and eventually we all have to check out. So when you check out, you can leave your family a check instead of leaving them with grief. And that I don't know how you argue with that and say it doesn't make sense. I don't know how you justify saying I don't need insurance. It doesn't make sense, but that's what black people do. So our community will continue to be on the bottom. Our community will continue to be last because we make lasting decisions that affect our future and they're all counterproductive. They're all negative. We'll spend $50,000 in a club. You got rappers that will spend two generations worth of coverage in the club one night. And if you go up to them and talk to them about an IUL, talk to them about an annuity, they laugh at you. So what's wrong with our community?